It's been 30 years, y'all. 30 years ago today, the Washington football team won its third Super Bowl, defeating the Buffalo Bills by double digits, one of the best teams NFL's ever seen. Y'all know we ain't sniffed a Super Bowl since then, but I'm choosing to celebrate the glory days today, and this was literally our last glory day. Let's all cherish it. The year was 1992. People were wearing starter jackets. Brother were trading in jury curls for high top fades. Hang with Mr. Cooper was a hit show, and people first started saying, I look like that guy. They haven't stopped literally since 1992. What a time to be alive. That season, a lot of great things happened. Washington went 14 and 2 in the regular season, and they weren't just winning games. This team was dominant. That 14 and 2 record came against a schedule with six games against eventual playoff teams, and this team outscored their opponents by 261 points in those 16 games, and then swept through the playoffs with an average margin of victory of almost three touchdowns. I'm talking steal your lunch money and your girlfriend dominant. Cross the street and don't make eye contact damn dominant. They were Sade on the airwaves dominant. Y'all remember 92. I'm just saying. The boogeyman wasn't real, but Wilbur Marshall and Charles Mann most definitely were. That season, Joe Gibbs proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was one of the greatest coaches of all time. Of all time! Mark Rippon had his career season as our starting quarterback. Ernest Biner got redemption after fumbling his way out of Cleveland. The Hogs were legendary on the offensive line. Daryl Green and Art Monk solidified their Hall of Fame resumes with that ring. And we even had a kicker named Chip. Chip Low Miller, to be exact. Of course, the chip in and chip shot puns wrote themselves. And the best part? Nobody in D.C. had ever heard of Dan Snyder. It was a magical time. In Super Bowl 26, Washington faced off against an amazing Buffalo Bills team with Hall of Famers Bruce Smith, Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and Andre Reid all at the top of their respective games. This was a team that went to four straight Super Bowls. I can't state how impressive it was to get there that many years in a row. Crushed. Crushed. Absolutely crushed. Rumor has it that Thurman Thomas hid his helmet to avoid having to face our Washington football team. Fun fact about that Super Bowl, the halftime performance was by Gloria Estefan, Brian Boitano, I know, Dorothy Hamill, and the Minnesota Marching Band. Now, no disrespect to figure skating or the Queen of Conga, but millions of people changed the channel to Fox at halftime to watch a special live football theme episode of In Living Color. And what was the first time that a major network successfully scheduled Super Bowl counter programming? Wayne's Brothers won, Gloria Estefan too. I'm sorry, Gloria. Probrasita. The rhythm is going to get you. One, two, three, four. Come on, baby. Say you love me. All right. All right. Back to the game. The final score of the Super Bowl 26, as I mentioned, 37 to 24, but it really wasn't that close. Buffalo scored a couple of times late to make things look respectable years later when we look back at times like these, but I know better. The outcome had already been decided. At that point, Mark Rippon was already rehearsing, saying, I'm going to Disney World. That Super Bowl victory was so amazing that 30 years later, we still have fans who consistently think next year is our year. And who am I to step on optimism? Nothing is certain these days, not even the new team name. But one thing is for sure, the Washington team that won Super Bowl 26 was special. One of the most special. Some of y'all weren't allowed to see them, so just trust me on this one. It's a big reason why a lot of your parents, aunts, and uncles still root for the team as hard as they do today.